Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful, 81 degree December day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the Oasis of Freedom here on this lovely, it is a Tuesday, December 28th, 2021 and um, so before I forget, I just wanted to plug uh, my sister channel down here in the Doomosphere, Environmental Coffee House, where Sandy Shellis invented, invented, uh, interviewed, uh, she had a guest on last night named Stacy Lee Sherwood. And uh, if you did not hear that interview with uh, the Doomer chick, I don't think she would mind me calling her a Doomer chick, Stacy Lee. Go over there to Environmental Coffee House and uh, listen to that excellent interview. Uh, I'm going to be reading, I think I will make uh, one of Stacy's essays called Grazed to Death. We're going to make that our first doomsday sermon of 2021, but uh, she all also talking about this article here on uh, that came out on Christmas Eve. This is what uh, the, those little lefties over at Counterpunch, uh, th this was their uh, warm and fuzzy Christmas Eve uh, essay. I'm gonna put, the little dog has Lyme's disease, we found out yesterday. He has Lyme's disease and another tick-borne disease. So we're gonna have to figure out what all that means. But uh, right now he seems to be doing fine. Uh, but we are going to go out to Montana here. What's going on in Montana over the Christmas holidays? This is by a fellow named John Horning. Not sure who John Horning is. Maybe we'll find out with his Merry Christmas wish from the state of Montana. A dark day in Montana as wildlife officials seek to new lows. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, on, on the December 21st winter solstice, the darkest day of the year, Montana wildlife officials opened additional areas to wolf trapping across the state, including inside wilderness areas and public lands bordering Yellowstone National Park and Glacier National Park. Uh, this decision is sickening and yet it does not even begin to tell the whole horrific situation that imperiled wolves and grizzly bears have faced all year in Montana and the stakes are only getting more dangerous as a long, cold winter descends. This year's start of the wolf trapping season was delayed in parts of western Montana to give threatened grizzly bears more time to safely reach their dens. Uh, are you following this? I had to read that sentence twice. This year's start of the wolf trapping season was delayed in parts of Montana to give threatened grizzly bears more time to safely reach their dens. This is that's a whole nother part of the story. Despite this, threatened species like grizzlies were not spared from the brutality of indiscriminate trapping Earlier this fall, a family of grizzly bears living near Glacier National Park stumbled upon two traps baited with a dead fox that a trapper had set to kill coyotes. This, the guys, you know, this, this story, it just gets more and more twisted. Uh, this is Christmas Eve, uh, their story on Christmas Eve. A family of grizzly bears living near Glacier National Park, stumbled upon two traps baited with a dead fox that a trapper had set to kill coyotes. Take that sentence apart. 
the trap snaps shut, gripping tightly around the feet of two of the bears. Wildlife managers were able to dart and release one bear, but it is believed the other trap may still be on the other grizzly bear's foot. Trapping is a disgusting practice using a dead fox to bait a trap just makes it more atrocious. Grizzly bears and wolves need our help, otherwise more and more will suffer the same fate. By New Year's Eve, so by Friday, what is today, Tuesday, over the next three days, wolf trapping will be opened statewide to satisfy the bloodlust of Montana's Republican governor and state legislators who are intent on brutally slaughtering up to 450 wolves. 40% of the wolf population in the state in just six months. 40%. There you go. Thankfully, most grizzly bears should be denned up by then, you know, by Friday. I think some cold air is blowing in. Grizzly Bear 399, the world's most famous mama bear pictured above, recently made it safely into her greater Yellowstone den with her four cubs. Sadly, the safety of a den is no longer refuge for some of Yellowstone's most famous wolves and wolf packs as 15 Yellowstone wolves have already been slaughtered this year, including seven from the Junction Butte Pack, the most watched wolf pack in the park. What happened with me, if, it was three years ago when I was in Yellowstone, I had the excellent good fortune. I mean, like right in front of me, this trio of wolves. It was a solid white wolf followed by a solid black wolf, followed by a gray wolf. Went right in front of me, a white, black, and gray wolf. Absolutely one of the coolest things I've ever seen, you know, in Yellowstone National Park with all the, you know, makes it worth driving to Yellowstone. And then I heard, I can't remember how I heard through the grapevine, within six months, and we were, we were deep in the park, Within six months, that white wolf shot dead. And uh, that was three years ago. So it sounds like, uh, how many did I just say uh, have been killed? 15, you know, wolves that, you know, reside inside Yellowstone have already been slaughtered this year. You know, they, they barely step outside of the park and some redneck guns them down is what they're talking about. Winter is a time for nesting, denning, and reflecting. The winter solstice marks the shortest day of the year, but it also marks a return of the light at Wild Earth Guardians. Okay, I'm sorry, John Horning is the executive director of Wild Earth. Earth Guardians, which protects and restores the wildlife, wild places, wild rivers, and health of the American West. At Wild Earth Guardians, we want to end the year focusing on gratitude and all the successes we accomplished together this year for wildlife and wild places, but we also cannot shy away from telling the dark stories that continue happening. We are standing up against these injustices and for the beauty and wildness that still remains. Above all, nature is cyclical and we know that our fight to protect the natural world will contain both moments of despair and darkness and moments of exhilaration and exuberance. I hope you're right, John, we shall see. Just as the winter descends, spring 
will also rise in a few months. Grizzly Bear 399 and her four cubs will emerge from their den. Let's do everything in our power to ensure that the world they walk out into is one that values coexistence and reveres the cycle of life. Again, John, I, I wish I could be there with you, brother. I, you know, I'm, I'm with you, dude. But I just hope uh, Grizzly Bear 399 and her four cubs uh, do not walk out of the uh, of that artificial boundary line of uh, Yellowstone National Park. Anyway, that is the Merry Christmas message from Counterpunch this year. Uh, and now that I am thoroughly depressed, uh, and you can find a lot more of this, uh, Sandy's opening video. Well, uh, everything I just said, the opening video over at, uh, over at Environmental Coffee House, uh, be, uh, be prepared, pretty much kind of what I just said. Uh, you can see it in action over there. And listen to uh, Stacy Lee talking about what's going on down here in Florida. What did she say that 25% of the manatees left in this state, 25% of the entire population of manatees died this year. This was 2021 is the, uh, is the single biggest death year of manatees. And they're just starving to death now. I mean, I mean, there's still, everything else is still happening, you know, getting hit by boats and everything else. But now as the seagrass is, uh, what were we reading there? There are the, these, uh, these hopium addicts. They're actually starting to feed the starving manatees heads of lettuce. They're, we're artificially feeding the starving manatees. You know, how many heads of lettuce are going to replace all the seagrass beds? But if you want to see a Florida manatee, you know, at this rate, at this rate, manatees will be extinct in three years. Uh, I tell you, it is an ugly world out there, but I haven't even... I have not even gone to see a manatee. I don't even, I don't even want to look at a starving manatee. You know, I live just a few miles from Homosassa in Crystal River. Anyway, guys, uh, I think I'm gonna go throw some chicken on the grill. Uh, get out there and enjoy your manatee s swimming with the manatees and uh, watching wolves in Yellowstone National Park while you still can. Bye, guys. I don't know what bird that is. Yeah, it's probably been about... Uh, and that's the crane.